Welcome, I'm Halcyon, and this is the weekly Hugnation broadcast. It's live, and then the archive is polished up a little bit, audio is improved a little bit, and uploaded to YouTube and iTunes. It is a weekly chance for me to process through my experiences in the world, what's going through my spiritual and cultural and emotional journey. I sometimes have notes, sometimes not so much, and I just trust that the process will be illuminating for myself and potentially help other people who might have overlap to see their own lives and their own perspectives in a different way, maybe a more productive way as they evaluate the things that I'm experiencing and sharing. So I say that to acknowledge that I'm making this about me. This is my Facebook page. This is my YouTube channel. This is my social media. And what I share here is about me. I try to also link to things and amplify, amplify others' voices. But in essence, um, what I am most equipped to share, the only thing I'm qualified to share is my experience. And what I wanna talk about today is how difficult that process seems to be right now. And I'm, I'm struggling to let the words out because I know that we are falling into a culture where there is a right and a wrong way to express things, a right and a wrong way to think. And I should say that that definition of right and wrong is different for everyone. So there is no stance, there is no perspective, there is no single viewpoint that will be free from criticism. And I feel like that's been getting worse and worse and worse. Social media is, is set up in a way that invites commenting and uh, different viewpoints so easily. And we have a media system that is constantly supplying everyone with ammunition to use to attack one another. So the, the, the idea of proposing an, a, a, a perspective or a thought is dangerous. Now, I don't feel like I have professional consequences from what I say out loud, but certainly people do. And you could argue that this is a good thing. This is a really good thing that we are having to be much more conscious about the way we speak. And I'm in the middle of it right now, so I don't really have the perspective to, to share about it. And because I'm in the middle of it, and because of the landscape that we're in, it feels unsafe to share where my mind is at right now. Now you could say, well, you should be listening more. And I agree. And I am trying to listen more. And, but to halt conversation, to halt the sharing of, of epiphanies and awareness for fear of it triggering someone and causing someone uh, anger, frustration, offense is does not feel productive. Maybe it's a short term that will lead to a longer term productive. And like I said, Maybe I'm in the middle of it and I can't see. Maybe in, in two months I will say, wow, how, how selfish and, and wrong I was about my own victimhood. I'm simply doing what I only know how to do, which is to just 
be authentic. And if that authentic truth has problems, I hope that I can be corrected or have an alternate perspective reflected to me in a way that contains the same compassion that I try to bring to my dialogues. I know that's a lot to ask and I don't have a right to ask that. I can't tell someone not to be angry. I can't tone shame people. And because of that, uh, this is a, a, a challenging landscape to, to speak from the heart for fear that that words, that thought, that idea uh, is wrong. I can tell you that over the last couple weeks, my social media posting has changed dramatically. In some ways, very much for the better. I am amplifying voices. I am linking to information that I think more people need to know about. I'm trying to use the platform that I have to disseminate information that I believe to be important and voices that I think are important. But I'm also dramatically reduced the sharing of my own perspectives. And again, you could argue that that's good, that I should be quiet right now. I just know that the, I'd say about 75% of my posts over the last week, I have written some ideas, popped, gone into my head, posted it, and then made it private just for myself, only me. Because although it is an authentic expression, in that moment, it isn't something that I am willing to defend for the next 24, 48 hours a week. I'm not sure if I need to, but inevitably there's somebody who is going to find exception to everything. And so I'm wondering if Facebook is the venue that I should be using right now. As I'm saying this out loud, I know that, you know, this could be a, a you know, every word that comes out of my mouth, I might take offline as soon as I'm done. Maybe this is just for the people that are here live. I feel a little bit more safe on YouTube because that doesn't have the same culture, at least in the people that are subscribers on my Hugnation channel, doesn't have the same culture of just like a quick, rapid knee-jerk responsing, which I'm not saying that it isn't brilliant and thought out and important, but the, the venue of Facebook is so easy to have those like, and since people are so armed with memes and, and catchphrases and opinions that it, you just, you, anything of substance will invite that kind of conflict-filled dialogue. A blog, I think, could be a safer place. I have a Medium page, YouTube, and I'm, I'm spending more time having conversations you know, with individual people I know or in uh, small groups in, in Zoom, and maybe that's for the best. Maybe that's exactly what should be happening right now. I'm simply sharing the experience that I'm having. And, um, and it's a challenging thing for me because this process of public sharing has been part of my flow for 20 years. And I'm having to adjust. Oh, poor Halcyon has to adjust. I know, I, again, I know this reeks of making it about me. I know it reeks of victimhood. Um, Am I allowed to have the thought? It feels like only if I'm willing to take the brunt of criticism in, in whatever tone people want to express it. And I find myself feeling a little bit or a lot like I did four years ago during the last presidential election, where I was horrified at the thought of a Trump presidency and so felt like I have to say something. You know, I have to speak up. I have to 
add my voice to the conversation. And every time I did, I would, the, the resulting comments and discussion was so toxic and so aggressive and so ugly that I would find myself like in a state of like spiritual sickness for three or four days where I just felt so depleted by the process. And I feel like that's kind of the state now where I can take a stand once a week or so and then have to nurse myself back to health. And perhaps this is exactly the way it should be. Again, I'm just sharing the, the truth that I am in right now. Um, and I'm trying to like figure out what is the, the appropriate path for me right now. Is it knowing that if I say something online that the part of the responsibility is that I do have to face the discomfort and sickness, the depletion, and recognize that, hey bro, this is your option to be talking about this kind of stuff. You're not living racism, which I totally get. And well, I, I take that back. I don't totally get, even as saying those words, I totally, obviously I don't totally get. I am working to understand better. I'm trying to read the books recommended, watch the documentaries and films and videos and interviews recommended and trying to figure out, is there a value to a white man's journey through this process? Or is shut up and listen the best use of my energy and experiences? I honestly don't know. Uh, I do have kind of a icky feeling about the, the, a, a landscape where people are feeling like it's unacceptable to voice an opinion or ask a question or, or propose an idea for fear that they will, you know, be wronged. Uh, uh, you're wrong to, to a point of feeling silenced. But maybe that is, you know, maybe this is the steps required for growth. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I know that uh, the it, that it has been illuminating for me aspects of this state of discomfort. You know, I realize that I care more what people think than I thought. I've always been fine with haters. You know, if someone wants to <laughs> attack me for looking like I'm gay or, uh, you know, there's all sorts of things that I've, I've fielded attacks for over the years. And usually I'm pretty okay with it, unless it's something that kind of is, I'm not sure if that I, maybe that does ring true in some way. When I'm accused of being a fraud, that always really hurts and I have to kind of sit with that. And because of the, the topics of the day, I don't have the luxury of having conviction in my ideas. Often I do have conviction. Even if I, I'm open to being learning and growing and learning and, and changing, I still feel like I have the right to be strong in my thoughts and beliefs. And because of the subject matter of the current conversations, I simply don't have the authority to have conviction. I get that, you know, I, my privilege is profound and deep and affects everything about me. So if somebody proposes that I don't get it, or I'm being offensive, or I am going in the wrong direction or whatever, I don't have the, the luxury of saying like, I hear you, I'm gonna process that, but I'm not so sure. I have to listen to every criticism. Maybe I don't have to, but I feel an obligation because I, because I recognize that my perspectives are, are, are indirect. 
I have to, to, to listen to experts of which every, every, you know, a uh, person who is living under elements of oppression is a, a far more qualified expert than I am. So, um, I guess I, I don't exactly know where I am headed, where we are headed. I know that uh, I am craving safe spaces, which is is, you know, as this white privileged man, it sounds pretty, pretty, I recognize the, the, the offensiveness of, of me saying that. But I want to read a definition of a safe space that I heard at a training that I went to this weekend that I really liked. It said, a safe space is not intended to make you comfortable. It's a place for you to get real uncomfortable safely. A safe space is not intended to make you comfortable. It is a place for you to get real uncomfortable safely. And I really like this. This is something that, I, that I've been in conversations with quite a bit around uh, my Burning Man camp. And where is that I want to create containers and, and spaces where people feel like safe to communicate difficult things, safe to say that wasn't okay. Safe to say, safe to, to say something and then be told that wasn't okay. Not to make it so sanitized that everyone is afraid of offending one another. One of the incredibly beautiful things about Burning Man is that in the space of radical self-expression, we have this safe space to explore and hopefully a place where people can push back when we might be getting a little out of line. And that is, you know, I think more more the case in a theme camp where you have a relationship and a family-like vibe and you can kind of go, oh, hey, you're getting a little, um, little, little over the line here. Let me, let me, let's steer you back. As opposed to saying, how dare you have expressed yourself in that way? That is sexist, that is uh, whatever. Um, because the, the freedom of expression in a safe space can be really profound. Even if it never goes in the direction of a offensive place, the knowledge that you could be offensive and then it would be a safe space to be steered back, I think is a powerful tool of growth or, or, or a, a, a environment of growth. So I'm craving safe spaces for this kind of dialogue and questioning. And Social media doesn't seem to be that place. So, I have a mailing list that I continue to, well, I haven't been, but I I, I will probably be communicating in that venue. Um, of course, the Zoom calls every day that I'm doing, it's much more personal. And I'm gonna be thinking about, you know, what this kind of time in the world means uh, to me. Not exclusively, but sometimes it's going to be about me because this is the experience that I'm having. This is the, the, the part of the cosmic organism that I have the most control over is this body, this mind. And so I, this is the only tool I have to make a difference in the world, to perceive the world, to heal the world. And I hope, I hope, as I continue to grow, uh, the the love in my heart and the the compassion and my desire for for reduced suffering for all beings can help this this path for me and for all people be uh, a beautiful one. So, thank you for letting me share. I love you. So wherever you are, let's have a hug. And grab yourself by the shoulders and imagine that you are not just holding yourself, but you're holding me 
you're holding all the people that you've thought about over the last 48 hours, people in your life that are far away, people that you've seen on TV, people that you want to reach out and hold. And just in this moment, just feel that those arms squeezing you are our arms. And the body that you're squeezing is our body. And let your mind dissolve a little bit and just sit in this place of love and connection and oneness. Let's take one deep breath in together, hold it at the top and just feel ourselves squeezing and connecting. And then let it out. On behalf of Grandpa Caleb, Larry Harvey, and all the Love Warriors, Happy Hug Nation, I love you. <laughs>